going to start with a folkloric piece from kind of the northwest of Argentina, and it's called a bailecito, so it's like a couple's dance, and it's called Viva Hoi Hoi, which is the, the province, and it's kind of like long live Hoi Hoi, and the beautiful terrain around it, and the beautiful women that come from this terrain, so... enter into oblivion as this piece evolves. It's a, I like to call it existential. Thank you. 
traditional tango now called El Abrojito, but uh, we're going to do it in a really old school performance format, which is off the cuff and completely improvised. So we both have in front of us a lead sheet which has the chords and the melody. Exhibit A. <laughs> but in the really early days of tango, you would have this style of playing called a la parisha, which is when everyone would be around the piano following the pianist, you'd have the chords, everyone would know the melody. And they, they, you know, improvise this tango. So we're gonna yeah. have a and La parrilla essentially means barbecue, right? <laughs> so you throw things on the parrilla on the barbecue, and that's how you make it up, right? Because it's all very kind of laissez-faire, and that's how we're gonna create it. So it's kind of a bit like jazz in, in, in this sense. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Yeah, I think it's my solo. Right, right I'm going to play something, a solo piece uh, called um, Valicha. It's a Peruvian uh, Andean piece from the Cusco region. Right now, my mum's Peruvian, I'm a half Peruvian. Very proud to be so. Um, although she's from a different part of the country, which is from uh, the northeast, is uh, kind of more like the jungle region. But nonetheless, I have a very strong affinity with Peru. Whenever I can go there, I do. And in one of those travels, I learned this piece. In fact, can I tell you a little story, like very, very tiny story? I did a tour through uh, the jungle of Peru once, and I played in this town called Tarapoto in the jungle. And it's a beautiful place, so many lovely people, very happy. They wear nothing because, well, nothing I mean because it's so hot they wear the bare minimum. All right, it is ridiculously hot. So uh, it's kind of halfway, like Brisbane, I think, is about halfway to how hot it is. <laughs> yeah, it's really quite, quite nasty. And um, then I got an invitation to play in this other smaller town, still, and there were a couple of really beautiful indigenous people who sought me after the, that concert. And they said, oh, dear Dr. Rojas, can you please come and perform in our, in our village uh, later today? We have a special program for the village and we'd like you to be there. And I go, sure, delighted to. I wasn't going to ask them for a fee or anything like that. You know? like, I mean, yeah, they, they were quite very, very humble. Um, but do you have an instrument? Yes, yes, we have we have an electric keyboard, no problem. So, <laughs> no problem. That was totally fine, no worries. So an electric keyboard you imagine to be something, you know, that you can kind of mess around <laughs> with and so forth. And uh, so I got there and I came and picked me up and I went there and there's a beautiful little place. It's so sort of like really in the middle of the jungle you open up these beautiful kind of huts and so forth. And um, there is electricity of course. Now, I went to see the keyboard. It was a Casio. It's this big. It was one and a half octaves. It was two octaves, actually. I think it was from here to about here. All right. And I had to perform three or four pieces on that. And so I thought, oh, no. And, and also, you know, the piano here, you've got nice and soft, and you can play it nice and loud, right? Over there, you play it really hard, and it sounds like this. Play it really soft, and it sounds like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no difference. Okay, so here I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Luckily, there was a little transpose button. You can actually lift it up by an octave and down by an octave. So, so if you play this note and you press that button, you would actually go up to this note. So I kind of fiddled with that a little bit as we went, made it up, and I played a couple of really beautiful Peruvian tunes and one classical piece of music. I don't know how I did that. But uh, we just managed to do that, and they were in tears. I'm thinking, oh no, this is the worst performance of Peruvian in my life. <laughs> so they must be in tears because they, they want to get out of here, right? But no, at the end, they're all coming to, to thank me and to say how beautiful the moment was. And I just could not believe the gratitude that these wonderful indigenous people from the northeast of Peru had. Uh, for me, that was one of the most special things. So every, any time I play any piano that's, that's not a Steinway or a Fazioli, I'm always grateful because I always remember that moment. So if it's a little bit out of tune or some notes missing, it's, a, not, it's never really an issue. <laughs> so having said that, I'm going to perform uh, Valicha, which is written about a uh, really beautiful indigenous women. It's amazing how many compositions there are in Latin America about <laughs> it's about this theme. <laughs> it's all very, very positive.
much fun. I agree. All right, so sum up another year. Yeah, we probably should have called the concert like Folkloric Dances. Kind of what we're, uh, yeah, right. That sounds, yeah. You know, I guess uh, you know we're playing a lot of regional music from the Andean region of Latin America, but also a lot through the regional parts of Argentina. And like they're all popular dances. Tango is a popular dance from the province of Buenos Aires and the city of Buenos Aires, the port city in Uruguay. And these are kind of from other parts, but you know it's the popular music that everyone celebrates and everyone dances to. And, and this is a samba. It's a much more emotive and slow dance, partner dance. I like to call it like a bolero in 6 8. And this is the first time I've played Samba, I think, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll give you a hug afterwards. This is a safe space. This is a safe space. <laughs> no triggers, right? <laughs>
very party. special trip for you. This will be a world premiere, actually a Brisbane premiere. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I thought it was before solo piano. But for the very first time, bandoneon and piano. This is from 1634, Anno Domini, in other words, common era. And uh, the composer is anonymous. When composers are at that period, that early mid-colonial period of Latin America, when they're anonymous, we tend to think along the lines that they may have been indigenous, right? But because they're probably uh, perhaps a little bit kind of pusillanimous, or perhaps a little bit kind of uh, maybe to be too humble, too modest, they wouldn't put their names on them. This is Hanak Pachak Kusikwini, which is a liturgical piece of music. It's the earliest example of a liturgical uh, uh, counterpoint, counter contrapuntal music that we know of. Uh, and we're going to perform it by playing the chorale and then with a little bit of improvisation over the top. Okay, it's a very, very beautiful piece. You can imagine children walking into the church with beating a drum, singing this music in four part harmony as well as in accompanied by string instruments. Uh, Sackbutts, which is like a, an old version that looks like of trombones and kind of wind instruments of that sort of that era. So this is seven, mid 17th century music. It's an absolutely beautiful piece of music.